Hallelujah. Amen. Let's worship him. He's worthy to be lifted up. He's worthy to be glorified. Well, thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. You may take your seat. Can we give a powerful clap offering to the Lord? Amen. Amen. First Corinthians fifteen fifty-eight. Not Corinthians fifteen fifty-eight. Selection and maintenance of the aim. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing that your labor is not in vain. Amen. Ngako ke bazalone bame abatande gayo. Ibani ngaba kibileyo. Abanga ekiyo. Aba vamen chalo em sebenzi ni wenkosi. Nazi uguti. Ugu sebenza gwenu. Agusilo ize enkosi. Hallelujah. Amen. So as we close up this conference. We have to know that we have to maintain the aim. Amen. The aim is the main principle of fighting. And maintaining the aim is the main principle of fighting and winning wars. Why are you a Christian? Why were you born again? Why has God brought you to where you are now? If you miss the purpose of the aim, then your life will become anything and everything. You might be deceived that your life is just to grow, have babies, and then die. So we said, what is your footprint? When you miss the aim, everything becomes the aim. I remember in the early days, the, the aim was to be a millionaire. To be a billionaire. Then what? If you have all the money in the world. Then... I remember a story I read on Reader's Digest. Of a British billionaire. Who owned these fleets of uh, uh, ships. What do you call them? This one they use for entertainment. The ones that people book in like is a voyage. Cruise ships, yes. They said one night he came out. He was walking on the deck. I mean, these things are uh, very huge. And they later looked for him. They couldn't find him. And the conclusion was he walked to the back of the of this cruise ship and dumped himself into the water. He has achieved what many of us want. But there was still an emptiness in his life. He pursued the aim that was not real. He sought things that he thought will satisfy his soul. Most women are shocked after they get married. The chocolate looked very tasty. Until you bite it. Yeah. Most people are eating, you know, when we grew up, we used to eat a chocolate called chomp. I don't know if they still sell it. Chomp. It's still there. One day I decided. This chocolate used to be, we used to call it chocolate, but I know today it's a sugary, it's not chocolate. So I said, this chocolate. chocolate. I'm going to buy it again. I want to feel how it is like. When I was a child, I enjoyed it. I, I beat it once. And from there, I look for the nearest dustbin. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> Do you understand? Real chocolate is 70% or more. Chocolate is 70%. Now, those who don't know chocolate, when they eat the real chocolate, 
They don't like it because they don't know the taste of a real thing. They've been made to believe the sugarish. So when, when you don't know what is the aim of life, a big house is the main aim. Do you understand? They will tell you that the woman is nice if you look at the, the movie on television. Until you, until you have one. Then you realize that this thing has its own life. Are you listening? What is the aim of your life? You have to select your aim. You have to maintain the aim. To select your aim and maintain your aim, it will take your steadfastness. Why are you married if you are married? Why are you born again if you are born again? What really drives you? The word steadfast is the way that tells us to keep course. To make sure that you fulfill your mission. And to be able to come back, to be able to come. This is why we use on the compass, we have got what we call true north. How many people can use a compass here? You know, we used to drive everywhere without navigator. I don't know what you call it. Nav- is it navigator, isn't it? Where you plug it on your map. You just put the address and then the thing takes you and you follow it. No. When I started driving, you have to use compass. You have to read the map. How many of us can read the map? How many of us can follow the true north? We were told that, you see that star? I'm talking to foreigners here. <laughs> you look at the sky. Then you start to deduce where you are in the frame of things. Then you start to deduce where you are in the frame of things. That's when you have true north. I grew up, uh, a little part of my life in the village. And I had my, my cousins who were keen hunters. We will go into the bush and they put traps everywhere. Tell you, I, I didn't know, I didn't have the skills. Once, once in a while, we will be Walking like half past 3 a.m., 4 a.m. In the a.m. <laughs> They'll be asking me, do you know where the things are? I say, no, I have no clue. I'm just following. So they started to teach me. Say, so this, is, this is the main, main direction. Wherever you are, if you are lost, stop. Look for a tree. Go up on the tree and get your true direction. From there, you can start walking. If you don't know how to read, then they teach you to read. To be on the true north. It doesn't matter where I am in the bush. I'll always find my way back. So, Christ has called you. Not necessarily to go to heaven only. But for you to fulfill your life mission. Now as a women's conference, the question is, I was asking myself, what is the aim? Can we go to the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 18? All women stand. Let's read the verse together if you are a woman. What, what does the Bible say? One to go. It is not good. Huh? 
Hallelujah. So the purpose of a woman, God saw that it was not what? Not, not what? For what? Do you see the revelation there? What is the revelation? Let me hear. Preach. Let's preach. Now, let's start. Let's start. And the Lord said, it is not good. Let's stop there. Do you see it? What's number one? What is the aim? What is the aim for God to bring a man into a, a woman into the life of a man? Huh? To be a companion. What do you think? How many are companions? So when you don't maintain the aim, you will pursue to be a billionaire. Amen. And you will miss the bigger picture. You will miss the purpose and the callings of God. Just to live your past, you can find yourself very far. Where I was in a car with a friend. We were coming into an interchange. The other one takes us to meet rent. And then the other one takes us to Johannesburg. We're talking. Not paying attention. By the time we open our eyes, we're very far. Wrong direction. We didn't maintain the aim. On the N1, on the freeway, there's no U10. Your life can be like that. Most people in life are, they are on the journey and there's no your turn. It is going to take you, some of us, we have to put, be on course and allow God to be the one to turn us, to go over again so that we can get back to our course. We were shocked ourselves. Oh, how did we get here? We are talking too much. We are intimate with our many things. Many, many people in life fail because they become intimate with things that have nothing to do with them. You are pursuing things that will not help you. Number one, if you, I'm, I'm just talking about those who say, uh, I'm looking for a companion. The man should not be. Will you fill that void? Will you fill that void? You are a plaque. You know a plaque in a, in a, in a bathtub. You have to plaque it. And pour the water to fill it up. But most women are unplugged and we don't even know where the plaque is. So, all the energy that is poured is being lost. Because we have missed the purpose. Number two it says, I'll make him a what? So, what is the number two? You are what? A helper. Um, now, does a helper have a mission? Um, I said, does the helper have a mission? Um, sisu, una, una. They might have an idea. They might have some skills. Banga, ba, na, ma, but before they can employ their skills, they always ba, have ba, to come back and say, are we still on course? Or they'll be the one to remind na. you, you have come out of course. Can we come back to course? Oh, this is the origin that you said we should do things. But most women have their own decision. And so they mess up their life. Mess up the family. Mess up their husband. Mess up everything. I've seen people divorce after 15, 50 years. Of being married. The children are grown. 
they are old to them they are frail themselves there is a story that was told of an old woman who decided to divorce his husband she discovered that after their first year of marriage you are talking oh. i think they were 56 married 56 years married their, their first year of marriage their first year of marriage he discovered that the, the husband had um, an affair or you know so the woman says i i'm divorcing him on principle So somebody was saying all these years are you going to cast them out Can I tell you something If you are a woman your job is to make the men Is to do what Yes Unfortunately most people can't make a man Yes. Your, your husband is still as wild as a bush. Very wild. He can tell you I you, you are not going to church anymore. Yeah, then you know you are failing in your work. When your husband becomes your enemy when your mother becomes your enemy when your father becomes your enemy when the child becomes your enemy please take your seat you just here i'm just going by the wayside Ma- maintenance of the aim the church our life as christians is to preach the gospel Hallelujah. Amen. This is our saying, you might undermine the little things you do. Into bengi yisho ukuthi ungadelela into engcane esizenzayo. But they might have such powerful effect. Kodwa zinamandla. The Bible teaches that a, a radar is a small thing. I Bible lesifundisa ukuthi into engcane. When you look at, at the, how big the ship is. Uma ubheka umkhumbi ukuthi ungakanani. And you look at the radar that makes the ship to turn. I don't know if you fly. I fly frequently. So, I saw what do they call them? This place that crash. There's a program on discovery. Air crash investigations. One big aircraft had a a problem with its radar. So the radar got stuck on a degree like let's say uh, an angle of 1%. stuck So the pilot tried everything. The plane the radar the plane was going in circles slowly but surely. Umshayele was ama yonkinto i plane ibijika ihamba ngesekele kancane kancane. The radar is the smallest part of the plane if you look at it. It's right at the back. We don't think about it. But it's the main main thing. So I want to challenge you. The gospel. Is the main thing why we are Christians. We are called to help the the poor. We are called to help the needy. I remember many years ago somebody wanted to give me title. I was in a foreign country. said this title you can get it. You just come to our village. And you dig a borehole. Our villages have no water. You come dig a borehole. Put the pump. pump. Put the tanks or you can even have you know the traditional one. You Everybody can pump for themselves. And says our king will give you a title that when you come to our village you will be celebrated and received. So I realized that's not my aim. I want to get to the village but that's not my aim. I want to preach in the village but that's not my aim. But to maintain my aim. As by the way I might need to bo- to dig a borehole. 
So that the chief and every other person will receive my message. Preaching the gospel is the aim of the church. Can you tell your neighbor preaching the gospel is the aim? For this reason Christ came. Hallelujah. Amen. The aim is to teach. You have to be wise with the media. Europe is what it is. Because of the gospel. Today they are the ones who are opposing it. They don't want the secret to come into our nations. Immediately you speak about Christ. They don't want it because where Christ is, there is light. So they remove the light so that people continue in darkness. They were asking the question. In China, they were looking at developing their tax system. And they asked the question. How does the West manage to get most of their people to pay tax? And China came to a final conclusion. That is because of the gospel. People have been taught to become conscious and take personal responsibility. The more you remove the gospel, the more corruption take root. So multinational will fight against you preaching the gospel. Are you listening? Amen. The gospel we teach the gospel we preach and the gospel brings healing in the community and the society we find ourselves in. As a Christian, keep the main thing the main thing. Hey, there's no amen. We used to say love God. Love the people. Sacrifice is demanded to carry the cross of Christ. To maintain the aim, you have to sacrifice. We have to be headstrong. We have to live a life that is selfless. Are you listening? Amen. You cannot achieve. I gave an example earlier that I listened to Oral Robert last night. And he was so, telling about the cost of preaching the gospel. You have to know that the gospel will not move until it is financed. The gospel reached me. I must make sure that others um, they are reached through me. Hallelujah. Amen. Do not be ashamed of our aim. We are not ashamed to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it's the power of God unto salvation. I said, we are not ashamed to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you still here? Yeah. You, you have to be sober. Yeah. Be very sober. I'm going to preach. I said to some people, if you were serious, you will be far. Yeah. Listen, uh, don't be deceived. No one has the capacity to raise another human being. It's by chance. My mother and my father cannot claim that they really have done a good job. If I didn't get born again, I'm telling you. Because if I look at my life before I got born again, from 12 to 16, I was becoming a nuisance. Hey, Bengi, Yeah. So, when you look at yourself, you might say to yourself, oh, my parents have done well. Let's subtract the church and let's see. Yeah. Let's subtract the church. For me, I, I'm not deceived. 
Masusa ingonzo I get my life at 16. I don't have time. I will tell you my life. My parents were deceived that I'm a good boy. And maybe at that age I look very innocent. I've got pictures that when you look at me, you think this child is very innocent. But you know yourself that you're not as good as you look. It is by the grace of God. Imagine somebody. Amen. Yeah, if we were to start to tell about the things we have done, we will be ashamed. The book of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. 2 Timothy 2, verse 1 and 2. I'm rounding up now. I'm teaching on Jesus our freedom. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The thing that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these things to faithful men who will be able to teach others. This is our aim. We are talking about freedom in Christ. Jesus was free. Can you tell your neighbor Jesus was free? Yeah, but he was bound by the vision and the life of the Father. Jesus followed the influence of the Father. And the vision drew him in. The vision was cohesive, was very strong. The love of Jesus to the Father drew him in. Psalm 17 verse 8. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. May you remain the center of God's attention. In the book of Job chapter 1, the Bible tells us that God said, have you seen my servant Job? There is no one like him. There is no one like him. You know, there are people who like to criticize. I was listening to a man criticizing women preaching. And I said, without women, there is very little we will achieve. Can you tell your neighbor, without women, there is very little we will achieve. We need every hand on deck. Yeah, we need, we need, we need everybody. The issue of children preaching the gospel. I mean, a child of 14 can make somebody pregnant. A 14 year can be pregnant. Can you imagine? And you are saying he's a child. Tell your neighbor, something is wrong with you. Yeah. When the child gets committed, gets involved in the things of the church, the parents, they say you are still too young. But the children are engaged in things that they say they are for adults. Mercy. Amen. Your innocence has been taken away. Tell your neighbor you are not a child anymore. Yeah. Out of ten people that I do counseling, only one will still be a virgin. That's how serious. That's the first question you ask. To try and help because there are people who come already spoiled. Certain tastes and attitudes. Yeah. Imagine somebody. Amen. Yeah. So you get shocked when somebody comes back and says, my wife is bad. 
my husband is bad. Then you say to them, let's go back into your past. Then you realize that their judgment is distorted. Jesus was free. But he was committed to the vision of the Father. Number two, let me be quick. Our freedom should not be equal to looseness and rebellion. I watched a clip. Sarina Williams was speaking. She was saying, I'm free. But I'm, dis- I'm highly disciplined. He says, my freedom has brought such great returns for my life. Ask your neighbor, are you free? Where is your discipline? Amen. Then you are not free, you are loose. Yes. You are in church and you have other relationships. Look, look straight, don't look to the side. <laughs> You are in church. Yeah. Now we are free in Christ. And there's no discipline. You are judging us. I know we are so shy. No, no, it's not judging. It's, it's just the freedom. Freedom demands a level of discipline. You are failing because there's no discipline. There's nobody bewitching you. There is no witch after you. It's just that you don't know how to read. Yes. You want to read at night. You lack discipline. Very few people can read at night. Yeah. Very few. It takes another level of discipline. Now TikTok have become the greatest enemy. One child told me, says, when I sit, by the time I finish washing my phone, it's because the battery is dead. Can you tell me that it's because my battery is dead? Four hours after, the books they are on the desk like this. You are free. That's no freedom. You are loose. You lack discipline. You might talk to somebody. Matthew 8 verse 9. Matthew 8 9. He said, For I also am a man under authority. Freedom brings you to be under authority. You see, the taxi drivers in Cape Town, they don't want to be under authority. They were blocking the freeway. And so they came and pulled their car and pounded them. And they were very violent. They were fighting. And Cape Town say fire with fire. And they soon discovered the, the area here is different. Good land that we should In Nigeria, when 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 you drive on the uh, expressway, you have police cars. They have written on the sign, fire with fire. In Nigeria, they didn't write police. They write fire with fire. And don't think it's a joke. Don't think it's a joke. They will tell you a dead criminal is a better criminal. I'm going to tell you somebody. Amen. Somebody. Amen. Number three, your will must be the will of God. 
Jesus said, not my will, but your will. So, you can't be married and have your own will. I listened to uh, this gentleman who was preaching. MacArthur. He's a very powerful theologian. And he was teaching on Ephesians chapter 5. Husband, love your wives. Uh, wives, submit to your husband. The Americans stood up in the church and they started walking and said, nonsense. nonsense. We don't believe this nonsense. So second service, he had to put the disclaimer and say, what I'm going to preach today might be very offensive to you, but that's the gospel, true gospel of Jesus. Your will is my will. Church is not a social gathering. This is not a society. Where we just come for burial, uh, for baby dedication, and for weddings. Congregation, they do all of these things. Your blog, your blog. When you are dead, they will bury you. Your blog, when you get married, they will help you to get married. But that's not the purpose of the church. The church does all of those things, but that's really not the main purpose of it. The purpose of the church is to do God's will. It's to tell women, submit to your husband. It's to tell children, uh, obey your parents. It's to tell the men, the husband, love your wife. Provide for your family. Give Provide. direction. Yeah, most men, after they get married, they disappear. We don't know where they are. Doctor. We can start interview. Do we have another mic? Let's interview doctor and find out who's in charge. Where's the missus? Hallelujah. No, leave the doctor alone, please. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. The Bible says, Sarah called Abraham my master. It might be little Sarah, but it is Abraham master. You are the helper. Umsis. Number four. Freedom comes through lots of responsibilities. You cannot be free. And you have no responsibility. You see, children when they reach about 13, 14, we start to give them a certain level of freedom. The first freedom we give them, we say wash dishes. Can you tell your neighbor, wash dishes? Yeah, it's the first. Clean the kitchen. It's the first. First level of freedom. You are being tested. Can you be trusted? Can you be depended on? Can you take responsibility? Christ says, not my will. He was tested. Freedom in Christ will draw you closer to God. And will draw you to greater good. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you here? Freedom calls for discipline. Jesus was free in the Father. But his freedom called for him to respect and honor God. Freedom calls for knowledge and understanding. Freedom calls for great attitude. Hallelujah. Amen. So there is no way you'll be free and not be disciplined. Let me close and say you are not free until you give what is dear to your life. Those who are free, they give their life. Abraham gave his son Isaac. That was the level of freedom that was demanded from him. What have you sacrificed? What have you given? Genesis 22, verse 2. Then he said, 
Take now your son. Your only son Isaac. Whom you love. And go to the land of Moriah. And offer him there as a burnt offerings on one of the mountains of which I will I shall tell you. What have you given for you to deserve what you want? You see, some of us have to lose our freedom so that we can know what it costs. Your freedom costs a lot. If you are a child here and your parents are the one paying you should know what it costs. Yeah, you should know. You will soon discover it. Uh, your parents will soon tell you you are no longer a child. Yeah, they will leave you with the children and tell you that the bread in the house is not for use for the children. Then you wonder, I'm taking down the children, but I'm not supposed to eat. Your mother will tell you you are no longer a child. You are big enough now. You you have no plates. Yeah. Don't tell we are tired of you. Yeah. You are not giving anything. Can you ask your neighbor? What have you given? To deserve anything from God. What is it that you have done for God to move for you? Yes. They, they are, the more you come closer to Christ, the more demands he will make. Drop your boyfriend. One young woman was telling me, says, this guy is my everything. I stay with him. He buys me food, clothes, everything. I don't have accommodation. So I said, are you a prostitute? Or what are you? Are you going to buy a house? Is an exchange. I said, I pay the price. But, uh, Abandon the boy. She alone Pay the price. Amen. Go and beg somewhere for accommodation. Without using witchcraft. Manipulation. There's no amen. I'm saying there is a cost. Secondly, the father gave his only begotten son. God the father gave Jesus. He gave Jesus. John 3 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What have you given? The Bible says, If you love your, your life, you love your husband, your wife, your parents, your children, more than the cost of the preaching of the gospel. The Bible says you will lose it. Yeah. It's not surprising. The rich are suffering or the middle age. What do you call it? Middle class. Chasing after the wind. My wife wrote the book. Chasing after the wind. Yeah. Academics working hard. I want to be a professor. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good idea. Is it all that consume you? Did, did you know there is a time you can do things when that time has passed, has passed. There is a time to pay the price now. Yeah. If you can make that decision, transition now. Ah, you look back. And you realize it cannot be done. I know somebody when we were coming full time. used to criticize us. He didn't know that. There isn't money in the church like he's thinking. During COVID, I saw him preaching on Facebook. He's trying to start the church. 
I say, listen, I've been in this thing for 20 something years. I've been a minister, a leader in the church for 32 years. Committed out and out. And you think you can come with theology and stand here and preach. God gave Jesus his commitment, he gave life. Lastly, Jesus, when Jesus came, Jesus laid down his life for our life. There is no way things will work until there is a sacrifice. Abraham, you cannot pass me a trick unless you decide to read. Yeah, it's not possible. You have to be the best in the family to read, to force yourself. You know, there are certain families, no one has been has had a degree before. You are going to be the best to have a diploma. You are going to be the first to be to have a car. You are going to be the first to buy a house. Oh, I can tell you my stories. When I go to they say I stole the money. That, sh- that shows you how poor people are. When I bought the car, oh, there were a lot of things. When I moved to town, when we bought, when we bought our first house, when we built it, you know what people said? That our dustbin, even if there's no dog that will come and trip our dustbin. You know dustbin? We say, it has been they say the way there is no food in the house. We have committed everything to building and paying this house. Dogs don't bother to pass our yard. You know, in the township, the dogs, the dustbins are always falling. They said there is only paper, there is only accounts. Envelopes of, of, of demand, letters of accounts, the things we owe. That when we came to town, what am I down? People were, were choosing Bula boots. Why would you do that? <laughs> on, the, on, on the street corners, our, our, our age group mates. The age group mates, the age. I'm going to Yeah, they were playing. They didn't want to pay the price. So I bought my second house. They said, they said, this is not people from far. They said, Hamba. But you go, you will come back. Yeah. I don't really understand. I'm saying there is there's something you have to pay. Every person, I was talking to the doctor here, I said, how long have you been to school? Just to get, just to get your doctorate degree. I think he said like 14 years. Apart from metric, from metric, another 14 years, no salary, nothing. How do you think the parents will feel? They will feel like useless <laughs> boy. Can you stop? The parents will say, please stop and get a job and do something. But there is a price to pay. How about you somebody? Amen. Yeah. Now depending, if you finish at 18, it means by 32 you are still at school. Yeah, well, friends are married, having babies. Mercy. Amen. Then your wife goes to the parents-in-law and says, my husband is a doctor. Then you say, today we will have enough money to pay all of our worries. Today we will have enough money to pay all of our worries. I don't know you are listening. Jesus gave his life. So that we may be free from death and sin. I had to give my life. You have to give your life. You know, for your mother to give birth to you, she trained that it's a risky. Most women go to, to the hospital and never come back. To be pregnant is a risk. Oh, it's a serious risk. When my wife was pregnant with her last child, the doctors were not flinching. They said, you either it's your life or the baby. 
And we said, for us, there's no danger. Satitina. My wife was supposed to fly. The doctor, she went a day or two days before flying. She was going to Israel. And they said, you will die there. In Koskazambe, for the two days, Israel, they said two days, three, two to three days, but it was shown a lap. The doctor said, You did well to come. What to doctor when they got to use? They terminate the pregnancy. What to keep his seas? Otherwise, it's you or the child. Choose your life. That's what most people are doing. They are trying to choose their life. Yeah, you will not have beautiful things in your life. If you choose your life. And Jesus today is saying the same. He says today. Choose. Who you will serve. He says I give you advice. Choose life. Make your choice. I made my choice many years ago. As a woman, you have made your choice to be married. You have made your decision to be born again. You made the decision to come to church. Nothing is by coincidence. Abraham had to pay the price. God gave his son Jesus. And Jesus gave his life for our life. And the same principle applies to you. Unless your life is given. He says those who keep their life, they will lose it. But those who give their life, they will have more. Every eye close, every head bows. Maybe you are here this morning. It's the first time you are coming to church. Or you have been coming. Choose life. Abraham gave his son. God gave Jesus. And Jesus gave his life for our life. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have an everlasting life. Eternal life starts by receiving Jesus. A purposeful life, a meaningful life comes through God. I want to pray together with you. If you are here this morning, I want to make right with God. I want my life to be made right with God. I want to experience His goodness. I want to receive this great gift. If you say, I want to be born again, I want my sins to be forgiven. I want to be a child of God. Lift up your right hand. I will pray together. God bless you. 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 Is there somebody else? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Is there somebody else? I want to receive Jesus. I want to make right. God bless you. I see your hand. Is there somebody else? God bless you. I see your hand. Is there somebody else? This is a choice. It's no. Jesus gave his life. I have given my life. I am still trying to lay down my life. That many may come to the joy. Of the freedom that is in Christ. To lay down your life. The Bible says there is no greater joy than this. That a man lays down his life for a friend. May you become a bridge for others to come to the knowledge of Christ. May you become the light in darkness. May you become hope to the hopeless society. If you are here. This is my last call. Don't be so close here too far. This is my last call. If you are here, you say, I want to receive Jesus. I want to make right with God. I want my sins to be forgiven. I want to start the new, fresh life. Lift up your right hand and lift it high so I can see. God bless you.
We're going to pray. I'm going to ask the whole church to stand. Those who lifted their hands, come here on the altar. We're going to pray together. Ashes, please help them. Can we stand, please? Can we give a powerful clap offering to Jesus? All those who lifted their hands, please come. Don't be intimidated. Grace and peace is for you. It says, for this reason I've come. That you may have life. And have it abundantly. An abundant life. An abundant life. An abundant life. I want to make right with God. Hallelujah. Can we give a powerful clap offering? Mother's room. Mother's room. Have you made right with God? Have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Hallelujah. We're going to pray. I'll ask all those here in front to lift up both of you. It's the only sign of surrender worldwide. To lift up our hands, to come before God and say, Forgive me. My eyes start afresh. Give me a new life. Mine, it was at 16. I look like a child. It was like a joke. And many times, one elderly woman came to our 20th celebration. She said, you know, when you got married, we thought you were playing. When you got born again, we thought you are a child. We don't understand. But God has been faithful to you. I want to tell you, God is faithful to you. We are going to pray. Please follow me as I lead. You can say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you today for your love, your grace towards me. Today, I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. With my own mouth, I speak that Jesus Christ is Lord. And with my own heart, I believe that you raised him from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Make me your child. You can say, Satan, today I cut ties with you. I have chosen Jesus. I belong to Jesus. You can say, Holy Spirit, come into my life. Lead and guide me. Even today, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that your word says, if I speak and I believe, I'll be saved. Thank you, Father, for this salvation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, you can drop your hands. Look at me. There are people behind you. They are just going to receive your party. And from there, you can go back to your seat. But at the end, at the end of the service, there will be a pastor who will come after me. He's going to invite visitors. To come with them. Uh, when we make that time, it's just at the end of the service, which is not far from now. Can you just turn around? There are people. Can we have more people to help, please? Hallelujah. Can we have more people, please, to help?
Amen. Amen. We're going to pray for healing. Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent this word and healed them and deliver them from their destructions. In life, we can get lost in the midst of busyness. You can lose your true north. One day, I had a pastor friend that invited me to come to his house. He gave me his address. I got into my car, which have a navigating system. I drove. I passed toll gates. And he sent me to turn and literally took, took me to a bush and said, you have arrived. <laughs> no house, nothing. There's no house anywhere close. It's not like it's a mistake. I can see some few houses. So, I picked the phone. I called the pastor. I said, listen. This thing says, I've arrived. I'm in front of your house. You stay underground. And then he says, you are lost. What you are There are distractions in life. Sickness is not only in the body, but the inability to understand, the ability to comprehend, and to follow the path that God has set before us. So if there is a physical sickness, yes. But I want us to pray as well for the distractions of life. Yeah, people are distracted. There's nothing as said as the young professionals who have bought the house, the car, and they think this is it. And so they are distracted to the greater life opportunities. We read Psalm chapter 2 verse 8. Yeah, we, we need to pray for God's healing. That our true north may be restored. Yeah, think about it. You run a race and at the end of it, they, they tell you, no, 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 you are disqualified. I've seen soccer clubs losing their promotion to the first division or to the National Soccer League because they, they uh, fielded an unregistered player. And the teams never say anything until the promotion season. Hey, one of the so we're going to pray. Believe in prayer. So please come to the altar. We send this word to heal us. I remember one day we were only two of us who stood. Yeah, other people didn't stand. That standing was my major uh, turnaround. From that day, I remember the meeting very well. Grace and peace came upon my life. And I became victorious. Please come. If you are sick in your body, but here we are coming as well against distractions. Pursuing wrong things. Being on the wrong race. Please
Let's pray. As cool again. I'll ask the church to pray in the spirit. Father, heal me. Baba, Restore me. Give Perfect my vision. May I stay? May I be steadfast? Yes. Lift up your hands, those who are here. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Lord Rebosa Kabayanda Rashalebosa. Lord Rebosa Kabayanda Rashalebosa Kaba. Lere Beyanda Roshalebosa Kabayanda Rashalebosa. Lord Rebosa Kianda Rashalebosa. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for healing. We pray for restoration. Restore us, O God, by the power and the grace of your Holy Spirit. We pray even today, Lord, have mercy. Father, we thank you for your word. You send your word and you healed us. You delivered us. You set us free. We pray, O oh Father, even today, touch us, transform us, renew us by your Holy Spirit. Here we stand, we pray for healing in our body, we pray for healing in our direction, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We lift up your name. Grace and peace. Lord, we pray for the power, the wisdom of God, the grace of the Holy Spirit. Father, we pray for direction. We pray for mercy, Lord. Lord, we Father, we thank you. We give you praise. And you are God who heals. You are God who restores. You are God who makes all things new. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you speak, that you heal, that you restore. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your grace, the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Make it fresh. Make it new. Lord, restore in the name of Jesus. Lord, restore in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your grace, the power, wisdom, wisdom. Father, you are the healer, you are the restorer, the giver of all things. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We exalt you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, mighty God, do a new thing. Lord, do a new thing. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Thank you, 
you, Holy Spirit, that you are God who speaks, God who touches, God who transforms. We pray for your power of transformation, renewal. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. No rebo sekia la bo sakabaya. No rebo sekia na rosha lebona. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. No rebo sekia na rosha lebosa. Thank you, Lord. No rebo sekia na rosha lebona. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to receive communion. Unless we keep standing ashes, please. The book of Exodus 12, 13. If we can stand, let's be on our feet. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you. When I strike the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to receive communion. The Bible is very clear. Jesus spoke. He says, do this in remembrance of me. We are going to receive communion for completeness in remembrance of the achievement that Christ has done for us. For our sake, he died on the cross that we may have life and have it abundantly. The Bible says he took bread. He broke it. He says, take it. This is my body. Which was broken for you. Father, we thank you for your brokenness. That in your brokenness we are made complete. I break every curse. Every power of darkness. Every work of devils among us and upon our lives. Father, save us by the power of your Holy Spirit. As we eat, may there be a complete work in our life. In the name of Jesus, can we break bread together? The Bible says he took the cup and says, this is my blood. Which was shed for you. For the forgiveness of your sins. Father, we thank you. That the blood of Jesus speaks for us. We thank you, Father, for the blessing. Of eternal life. The blessing of protection. I speak protection upon everyone of us here. May you cover us, O Father. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this communion. We receive it with thanksgiving. We thank you for healing, for restoration, for advancement, and protection. Even upon as the church, we dedicate these elements, daily things we use in our homes, for this purpose. Father, we pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to be upon these elements. Even as we eat and drink, we dedicate them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Church, can we have communion together? I shall help us, please.
The book of Acts chapter 10 verse 4 We're going to receive our offerings Tithes and offerings And when he observed him He was afraid And said what is it Lord So he said to him Your prayers And your arms has come up before God. We are going to receive our tithes and offerings. And we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. As we come before you, Lord, with thanksgiving, lifting up these our offerings, bless and prosper us. Establish us, O God, by your Holy Spirit. Guide us, O Father, I pray for each and every one of us as we give, as we pay our tithes, that Father may the promise of your word come to pass upon us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Can we come as we bless? We have a, a way. You can swipe your offerings. Sing yes, you so can so transfer so it. Or, or you can snap it. No more snap. Praise the Lord. My can we come as we bless the Lord? Sing yes, so 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 I can be on the fire. No other God, 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, even today. Here we are standing before your altars, lifting up, Father, your name. I pray for this, your children, and the many others, Lord, who are standing, those online, Father, those who are listening, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, Father, may you bless and prosper your people. May they be the head and not the tail. May they be the, may they be the first and not the last. May you bless the work of their hands. May you prosper. They are coming in and they are going out. Father, we pray as we read the book of Acts 10, 4, that our offerings, Father, and our prayers have become a memorial before God. Lord, we give today because we love the work of God. We give because we love what Emmanuel Christian Church is doing. And we give, oh Father, for you promised in your word you will bless us. And Father, we give because we want our community to be blessed. We thank you, Father, for this grace. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May the Lord give you peace. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Can we give a powerful clap offering as we pay our time? Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Can we continue just... 